Hello and welcome to a discussion on short-term decisions. Part 1 is a general overview of the different types of short-term decisions. Part 2 will then provide you with examples. After viewing this video, you will be able to compute the change in profits related to six types of short-term decisions. We will learn to add a product line, drop the product line, accept a special order or not, make or buy, use constrained resources, and determine if we should sell and split off or process further into a new product. You will also learn common terminology related to short-term decisions. Short-term decisions have two common characteristics. A short-term decision can be implemented quickly and reversed quickly if results are not as expected. Short-term decisions can be easily reversed because they do not require a large investment. Short-term decisions often impact a company's product line. Take a moment and read through the following examples of short-term decisions. The managers in the company will have ideas to improve the profits of the company. These ideas are brought to the accountant and the accountant does an analysis to determine the expected change to profits if the idea is implemented. Only relevant items are included in the analysis done by the accountant. Relevant items will change if the idea is implemented. Relevant items can be incremental, which means the sales or cost will increase if the decision is implemented. Or they can be avoidable, which means a cost will not occur if the decision is implemented. An opportunity cost is also a relevant item. Opportunity costs are revenue that will not occur if the decision is made. Irrelevant cost will not change if the decision is implemented. Ignoring items and amounts that will not change simplifies the analysis. There is no need to put items in the analysis that will not change in total for the company if the decision is made. There are some general rules about relevant and irrelevant costs that always hold true. Sales that change and the variable production cost of making the sales units will always change if a decision is made that changes sales. Added fixed cost and avoidable fixed cost, by definition, will always change. Losing out on a benefit or revenue that could have been received is always relevant. There are certain costs that are always irrelevant. Costs to operate the business, regardless of whether or not the new idea is implemented, are always irrelevant. Cost that can't be recovered even if the decision is made, is referred to as sunk cost, are always irrelevant. Sales that will not change if the decision is made are also always irrelevant. The first step in doing the analysis related to short-term decisions is to determine the items that will change if the decision is made. These items are relevant and will be included in the, in the analysis. Irrelevant sales and cost are ignored because they won't change in total for the company regardless if the decision is made or not. A decision that changes sales will always have relevant items that need to be considered when doing the analysis. Sales can change with the sales of new products, selling a variation of a product, or the decision not to sell specific products in the future. A company can change sales without making a significant long-term investment. Remember that the amount of investment required and how quickly the decision can be implemented or reversed is what determines if it is a short-term decision, not how long the company will implement the decision. When sales change, the related variable cost and resulting contribution margin changes also. The short-term analysis must compute the change to contribution margin from the sales change. This is done on a per-unit basis and multiplied by quantity of units involved in the decision to get a total contribution margin, which is used to consider fixed costs that will change. Always use the contribution margin income statement format when sales change. Dropping a product line will change sales. Sales of the product will not occur in the future. Always use the contribution margin income statement format when sales change. Less sales will also result in less contribution margin. Compute the contribution margin from this product line only. 
Variable costs will be variable product cost and all variable selling costs related to the product line. Net the contribution margin lost with the amount of fixed costs that will be saved if the product line is not sold. Fixed costs saved must be directly related to this product line only. Ignore all other fixed costs that will continue when the product line is dropped. The net of the contribution margin the company will no longer have and the fixed cost that won't be incurred if the product line is dropped is the change to operating income. If fixed cost saved are greater than contribution margin lost, the product line is normally dropped. Another common short-term decision is whether or not to add a product line or a new product. Adding products changes sales. Always use the format of the contribution margin income statement when sales change. Begin with the sales price and variable cost per unit to get contribution margin per unit. Multiply the per unit contribution margin by the number of units to get the total contribution margin that will be added by the new product line. Subtract any added new fixed cost to determine the change to operating income. Do not include costs that will not change in total for the company if the product line is added. Another common decision is called a make or buy decision. This analysis also applies when a company is deciding whether to do the work themselves or pay another company or supplier to do it. The accountant uses two columns to do the analysis. The column on the left is referred to as the make column. This column lists all costs the company will not pay if they buy it. It is important to note that this column is not all the cost incurred to make it. It represents all the costs the company will not pay if they buy it from someone else rather than make it themselves. The column on the right computes the cost to buy. Begin the top part of the analysis on both sides with per unit cost and multiply by the units to get a total variable cost. The total variable cost is added to total fixed cost to get the total cost for each alternative. The alternative with the lowest incremental cost is generally the alternative that is most profitable for the company. Think about this analysis in terms of replacing the cost on the left with the cost on the right. You would only replace the cost to make with the cost to buy if the cost to buy is less. Special orders are sales to customers that the company will not have without a special low price or a modification to the product for a different price. Total sales will change if the company accepts the special order, so always do the analysis using the format of the contribution margin income statement when sales change. Begin with the sales price and the variable cost per unit related only to the special order to get the contribution margin per unit of the special order. Multiply the per unit contribution margin by the number of units to get the total contribution margin that will be added with the special order. Subtract any added new fixed costs to determine the change to operating income. Do not include costs that will not change if the special order is accepted in the analysis. Special orders do not change the ongoing fixed cost of the company. Sales to normal customers will not occur when a company is already manufacturing at capacity and the special order is accepted. When the company is already at capacity, sales to regular customers cannot occur if the special order is accepted. The contribution margin lost from not being able to sell to current customers must be considered. Use the contribution margin income statement to calculate the contribution margin that will be lost from the units that won't be sold to regular customers. Units that won't be sold is equal to the units that will be sold in the special order. The profits from the special order are netted against the loss contribution margin from not selling units to regular customers. This will give the net total change to profits because of the special order. A limited resource is a shortage that limits the company's ability to meet customer demand. The company can only produce as long as the limited resources are available. Limited or constrained resources can be a trained labor force, a certain direct material, or even space in the manufacturing facility. 
The accountant must compute the contribution margin for each quantity of constrained resources, and the company should make and sell the products that give the highest contribution margin per unit of constrained resource. The last common short-term decision we will discuss is to sell it split off or to process the product further into a different product that can be sold for more. These products are jointly manufactured, which is called the joint process, until separate products evolve from the production process. When the products are processed to the point they can be sold, called the split off point, the company must decide whether to incur more cost and make the products into different costs that can be sold for a higher sales price. Let's make sure we understand the terminology associated with the decision to sell products as they process them further to sell for a higher price. Joint costs are the initial cost to manufacture products to the point where separate products can be sold. Joint costs must be allocated to each separate product, a step that is beyond the scope of this video. Separate products can be sold after the split-off point. The decision of whether to process products further is made at the split-off point. Let's look at a quick example of a joint manufacturing process. A dairy, firm, a dairy farm produces milk, which can be processed further into skim milk or cottage cheese or cheese. All of the costs that occur to get the milk are joint processing costs, and these are part of the joint process. The split-off point occurs once the dairy has the milk that it can sell. The decision to incur costs to further process the milk into different products that can be sold for more is made at the split-off point. The analysis includes only additional revenues compared to additional cost related to further processing the product. The first step is to determine the additional revenue if further processing is incurred to produce different products. The second step is to identify the additional cost of further processing. Then compare the added revenue to the added cost. More added revenues than added cost will lead to more profits. After viewing this video, you should be able to compute the changes to profits related to the six common short-term decisions. You should also be familiar with the common formats. Adding a product line, dropping a product line, and accepting a special order all use the contribution margin format. Make or buy decisions using constrained resources and sell at split off have their own format of analysis. You should also understand the terminology related to short term decisions. Please watch the next video, which is Short Term Decisions Part 2. The next video will provide examples of each type of short term decision. Thank you for being prepared for class.